I'm taking the rubbing strakes to this boat to the next level. Hi, I'm Joe, and welcome to Motor City Boat Works. Let's get to work. If you're new to the channel, I want to welcome you. And if you're one of our returning subscribers, welcome back to the works. The fiberglass boat behind me is a 1986 Alvin 27 family cruiser. We call it a pocket trawler. It's a trailerable trawler. It can be towed and launched by the do-it-yourself owner. I've stripped it down to a bare hull and now I'm reassembling it over the next 24 to 36 months. I've made several modifications to the hull of the boat, as well as adding a hardtop that covers the center cockpit. This episode, we're gonna talk about one of the projects that I've been waiting to complete for almost six years now. We're gonna talk about improving the rubbing strakes on the Albin 27. So let's make sure we know what we're talking about. This right here, this is referred to as the rub rail. It is a piece of plastic rubber that goes around the hull deck joint. This is the deck, this is the hull, they're joined together here. Now this right here is a plastic insert. There's a rubber C-channel that goes around this and it goes all the way around the boat and protects the hull deck flange. It's called the rub rail. On the Alban 27, at the stern quarter of the boat on each side, there is approximately a five foot piece of teak. It's about three quarters to one inch thick and only maybe one inch wide. These are called the rubbing strakes. Rubbing strakes are designed to protect the hull for when you're docking, doing things like that. But in many cases, and on most boats, the rubbing strakes are really more of a decorative sort of feature. They're really not robust enough to protect much of anything. So what I have been thinking about doing, and I discussed this on one of the live streams, is replacing the teak rubbing strakes with something a little bit more robust. It's a project that I've been thinking about for a number of years. What I wanted to do is I wanted to show you uh, one of these pieces of teak here. So this is a piece of teak. Let me take it down. Let me show you something interesting here. This piece of teak is about one inch thick, maybe one inch wide. It's cut in a trapezoidal shape. The original teak rubbing strakes were attached to the hull using some small number six, three quarter inch stainless steel screws. It was screwed actually right into the hull. Now the hull of the Alban 27 above the waterline is somewhere between 10 to 12 millimeters thick. That's about three eighths to half inch thick. You really don't want your rubbing strakes screwed into the hull because the idea is the rubbing strakes are designed to be sacrificial. Like if you crash into something, say a dock or whatever, the whole idea is that they are supposed to be damaged and destroyed and they get replaced over time. But when they're screwed into the hull, well, that creates a problem in that the rubbing strake can be destroyed and torn off. It'll also damage the hull. What you really want is something that's through bolted to the hull, but can be removed at a later date and perhaps replaced. This is what was originally on the boat. It's quite small and I've decided to upgrade that and kind of come up with something different. So we're going to replace the rub rails, the teak rub rails with this. Oh, -ho! look at this piece of monstrosity. What is it? Oh, is that sexy or what? You're so sexy. Look at that. I love it. That's a big piece of rubber. What is it? It is a piece of what's called Duramax D-section rubber fender. It is used in uh, dock building, you know, for marinas and docks. It's also used in loading bays for trucking and lo logistics. Uh, you might see them in a warehouse somewhere. And, uh, but they're also used on law enforcement and military nautical vessels uh, as a type of rub rail. And that's where I got the idea from. In my previous job, I had seen boats with this sort of big protective rubber fender on there. And I thought, man, that's the kind of thing that you want on your cruising boat for when you crash into the dock or you hit a piling, instead of scraping the heck out of your hole here, you got a little bit of protection there. So I did some research about 
what this stuff is made out of and how to get it. My research led me to discover that this material goes by the trade name Duramax, but it's actually made overseas, like in China, and it comes in giant 100-foot rolls. It's then shipped to the United States where it's cut up into pieces and sold by local rubber suppliers and rubber distributors. The trick is finding some place where you can buy this material and not pay the $15, $16 a foot that all of the marine suppliers want to charge. Because they only sell it in giant lengths at a lower price, you pretty much have to pay to get something that's only around 12 feet long. I ended up purchasing my Duramax fender from Hamilton Marine, but the end caps that I used on the rubbing strakes, well, I purchased those locally from a company called Marine Machining and Manufacturing. It's in Clinton Township, just outside of Detroit. Motor City Boat Works has no sponsors, and I get no compensation from any of the companies or the products that I sometimes mention on my channel. However, in the description, I sometimes put links for Amazon where you can find some of the tools or items that I'm using in the restoration of my boat. Amazon does provide a small commission if you use those links. You may be able to find this material someplace closer to you, and I encourage you to try and find a rubber distributor who will maybe give you a piece of this material that you can then cut down to use you'll save a lot of money. You can see here a cross section of the D section rubber. It's about three inches by three inches. The interior is hollow. That's the part that's designed to flex. That is gonna be the rub rail that goes on each side. It's only about, I don't know, maybe five feet long. And it goes right in hill here. I got the holes pre-gelled, but I'm waiting for my shop assistant to be available so we can try and mount these things. There's a backing plate on the inside of the boat and everything and it's really going to make a nice rub rail for the back of the Alban 27 something that's uh, not been done before I think it's going to really be great I really wanted to try and put this D section fender all along the side of the boat basically doubling as protection for the rub rail but the issue is is that inside the Alban 27 because of the pan liner I don't have access to the interior of the hull in many places. The only place that I can actually access the hull for through bolting is the aft cabin of the boat. Because through bolting relies on the strength of the connection to the hull, everything has to be done with backing blocks and large fender washers. So you have to make sure that there's something behind the hull to reinforce it when you do this type of installation. Luckily, in the Alban 27 in the aft cabin, the original locations for the rubbing strakes, well, they already had backing blocks fiberglassed into the hull. There's about an inch thick piece of, I guess, marine plywood put into the fiberglass hull. It's all solid one piece, and that's actually the support for the rubbing strakes. I only had to extend this area by one or two inches to ensure that it covered the new desection rubber. Now, one of the issues with this material is that it is a type of extruded rubber, which means when it's made in the factory, it's done using a lot of heat and a lot of pressure. M rubber material is forced through a mold and it's extruded, causing its shape. It cools and then it is the hard rubber that you see. But when this happens and during shipping, the rubber can become bent. It kind of has a position that it be, is used to being in. It's often been coiled. And what this means is that when it comes time to try and fit it on the side of a straight hull, well, you're going to have issues. There has to be a way to kind of get it to lay flat. Now you could try and warm this thing up with a heat gun or something like that. But what you really need is to raise the temperature relatively quickly and get the rubber to kind of relax itself and get more into a kind of a straight linear position. And to do this, I came up with the idea of creating a hot box. Ooh, you're making me so sweaty. Basically, I purchased foil coated cardboard, like it's sometimes used for uh, putting in duct work inside a house. 
and I was able to take this cardboard and then turn it into kind of a box shape and then put the rubber inside the box and then warm it up using my portable shop heater. Once the desection rubber is straightened out and everything's cooled and it's good to go, well now you can begin to figure out where you're going to position these on the hull. I tried to use the old position of the rubbing strakes and I even tried to line up the old screw holes. Now the trick becomes trying to align all of the holes together. You've got to drill a hole through the 3 inch desection rubber, through its base, through the plastic insert which goes inside the desection to prevent the bolts from being stripped through and have it line up against holes in the hull. This is one of those times that it takes a lot of measuring and remeasuring and triple measuring to make sure that everything is lined up. To drill the holes inside the desection, you're going to want to use one of your sharpest drill bits and you're going to want to use a drill press. The holes have to be perfectly perpendicular. You really want to make sure that you cut nice sharp holes. Make sure you put some tape over the top of the rubber so it doesn't tear away. The Duramax end cap actually comes as a 45 degree corner piece. You have to cut off one side of the corner piece in order to use it in a linear application. To affix the rubbing strakes to the hull, I ended up using one quarter inch stainless steel bolts. They're about three to three and a half inches long and they have Phillips heads because I need to be able to get a screwdriver into the D section to hold the bolt in place while I tighten it from the other side. For this installation, I'm using a product called 3M4200. This is a marine sealant that works great for above and below the water line. It dries relatively fast and it makes a nice strong bond. It's both an adhesive and a sealant. The only problem with these marine sealants is that they are notorious for kind of getting everywhere and making a mess. This stuff has an amazing ability to kind of stick to everything and get on you in places that you didn't even know you somehow got sealant on you. You really have to plan ahead and kind of have a thoughtful process about how you're going to be applying things and cleaning up after yourself as you move along. If you don't, you're going to end up making a mess. Ask me how I know. So this is one of the end caps that goes on the end here. There's two on each side. They've got to be trimmed a little bit in order to fit on top of the plastic insert. And uh, this is a job for the chopper. <laughs> I've waited almost six years to do this project. Today, we're gonna to be putting in the rubbing strakes for the Alban 27 family cruiser. It's a kind of a complicated, involved project, making sure everything lines up and is waterproof. It's gonna be a full day. So this is the challenge of this project. What makes this project so difficult is that we've gotta get this flexible piece of rubber that's not that flexible up against the side of the hull and line up each of the mount points and connect it and make it waterproof. And as you can see, this thing is not entirely straight because of course it's rubber. It's been heated up and it's kind of been flattened and this and that, but it has a natural tendency to kind of turn back into its extruded shape when it was first made. Each of these bolts has to go through not one item, but actually two different items, and then the hull. Because inside here is a piece of plastic uh, HDPE that's used as basically a washer so that the rubber doesn't get crushed and torn out. 
you have to have this track inside there. So it has to go through this rubber, through this track, which is inside here, and back out, and then line up against the hole. And in order to hold them in place, you've got to be able to put a screwdriver into the track here, a good almost inch, inch and a half, to catch the end of the bolt. And everything's got to line up. But the, but the tolerances have to be tight enough that it can be waterproofed, but not so tight that you have a difficulty aligning everything. Make sure there's no problems. Now, how do you get it to align like this? Well, very carefully, in very particular places, the holes need to be slightly oversized, not exactly one quarter of an inch, because a one quarter inch bolt going into a one quarter inch hole it's very tight and has to screw in there. The tolerances are too tight to get everything to line up. There has to be some give. So in a couple key places, the holes are slightly enlarged. In a couple key places on the HDPE track, the holes are slightly enlarged. So everything can be aligned during assembly in order to make it work. And the marine sealant will take up that gap, provided you get enough in there at the right time during assembly. So that's what we're trying to do today. It's kind of challenging and it's like a three-dimensional problem, three levels that you got to work through. So what am I doing here? What I've got is a little bit of the uh, 3M4200, right? This is the marine sealant that we're using. It's black and I've got it on a little q-tip here and I'm using it to basically butter up the hole. Now, why am I doing this? You could just take a bead and squirt it inside here, and then of course, what happens when you put the screw in, everything gets pushed out. But if you put this in there and you run it around the hole here, it gives it more surface area to hold onto. That way, when you put the bolt in, it won't kind of pull everything off if you're, say, screwing it in and stuff. Now, you can't do this when the hole's sm too small, but since the Q-tip fits inside here. After several dry fittings, it's time to just take the plunge. You put some sealant in the holes, you put some more sealant on the back of the rubbing strakes, around the bolts, you line everything up, and you just send it home. And then with a shop helper holding the bolt in place, you put the fender washers and the nuts on and just tighten it down. And if you did everything properly, it should all line up and look pretty good. Ha <laughs> ha, look at that. After all that, we've got a great seal. Everything is tight and it all went together exactly according to plan. Fantastic. This is one of those projects that I think every boat could probably benefit from, especially if it's a power boat. You can never have too much protection for the hull of your boat. It takes a little bit of work and a little bit of planning, but in the end, the results are worth it. If you have a question about this episode, please leave a comment below or feel free to contact me at the Motor City Boat Works website or via the email on the homepage of my YouTube channel. I want to thank you for stopping by. We'll see you next time. Stay motivated. If you like these videos, please hit the subscribe button. These videos would not be possible without your support.